All right, so I got to get this video knocked out because the playoffs are tonight, and I'm excited. I'm rooting for Kansas City in case you're curious. All right, next up, I've got links to all the gear I have in here in the studio as well as gear I've utilized throughout my journey uh, that I strongly recommend and encourage you to consider. If for whatever reason you choose to go that particular route, I would ask you that you click one of those links. It will take you to Sweetwater, and I will get a small percentage of that sale. It's a good way to help the channel out, and I appreciate it. So you bought yourself a Ferrofish Pulse 16 and you want to know how do I get this thing connected to my existing interface. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get on to the Ferrofish. So up first, let's talk about the base Ferrofish Pulse, which does not include Dante or Matty. So that's going to enable you to connect up the 16 channels of I.O. via your existing interface through two sets of 8 at I.O. So you have 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 in, 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 out. You need that on both your existing interface and the Ferrofish Pulse has that automatically. So if you only have one set of ADATs, you're only going to be able to use eight channels of I.O. on the Ferrofish Pulse. If you're sticking with ADAT and you want to be able to utilize all 16 channels of the I.O., you're going to have to record in 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Anything above 48, let's say you're only gonna use one set of ADAT. So that's ADAT in and ADAT out. 8 in, 8 out at 44.1 or 48. If you decide to go 96 as an example, that's going to be cut in half. You're going to use eight, one ADAT out and one ADAT in for four channels of I.O., not eight. So therefore, if you wanted to record at 96K, you're only going to be able to take advantage of eight channels of the Ferrofish Pulse and not the 16 if you're connecting it via ADAT only. One set of ADAT I.O. in and out will give you four channels at 96 or 192. Again, this has nothing to do with the Feral Fish Pulse. This applies to all audio interfaces that use the ADAT protocol. Now, if you're curious, I will walk you through an illustration on how to make these physical connections. That'll be just a little bit later in the video. Now, the base Feral Fish Pulse is upgradable if you decided to go Maddie as an example or Dante. Check with Feral Fish Pulse on buying the additional I.O. card that enables you to have that particular feature. Otherwise, you're going to buy a Ferrofish Pulse with either ADAT, Dante, or Matty as an example. So everything I'm going to talk about next has to do with those protocols. Now, those protocols talk a totally different language, so understand that. Matty is much easier and quicker to get going, but primarily is something that's used in live sound production. Most studios... Uh, including broadcast studios, choose Dante. Uh, it's a proprietary network that takes a little bit more knowledge getting set up, but offers a lot more power later on if you were to utilize it. However, for most home project studios, either one would be more than adequate. The reason you choose Matty or Dante for this is because it's very easy connecting to your interface via a single fiber optic cable that you can buy to run between your interface and your Ferrofish pole. Now, if you have an interface that is capable of doing Dante or Matty, I strongly suggest you consider going that route with the Ferrofish Pulse. What this will do is it will leave you your additional 16 channels of ADAT I.O. on your recording interface and also the 16 channels of ADAT I.O. available on your Ferrofish Pulse, giving you a total of 32 channels I.O. available in a combination of your Ferrofish Pulse as well as your recording interface, leaving all of the other I.O. between the analog I.O. that's coming in and out of the Ferrofish Pulse to talk to your interface via Matty or Dante. So as an example, if you wanted the Ferrofish Pulse to record drums in a separate room, Matty or Dante is an excellent choice for that. Why? Because your connections are run through a single fiber optic cable. In my studio, I have an RME UFX Plus that has Matty I.O. available on it. I chose to go the Matty option with my Ferrofish Pulse, so it would allow me to be able to keep my 16 channels of ADAT I.O. available on my RME Fireface, as well as the 16 channels of ADAT I.O. available on the Ferrofish Pulse, having all the analog I.O. be connected via just Matty. 
Matty, for me, was a very simple setup. It was plug and go. Really was that simple. No configuration, no nothing. Everything worked as you would expect. Dante, on the other hand, does require a little bit more work to get it set up, but like I said before, gives you more options down the road. Here we have 16 inputs and 16 outputs via a balanced quarter inch jack. So let's talk about setting up external hardware via the Ferrofish Pulse. In this example, I'm gonna take a compressor and I'm gonna connect it to the Ferrofish Pulse's channel one. So I would come out of the compressor into the input of channel one. I would come out of the output of channel one and go into the input of the compressor. So this way, it's going to send the signal within your digital audio workstation out via ADAT or out via a digital connection of some type that we'll talk about a little bit later. You would repeat this process for every piece of hardware you have in your studio. MIDI I.O. MIDI I.O. is exactly what you think it is. If you've got other MIDI devices in your studio, you can utilize the MIDI I.O. on this to be able to connect those up. MIDI can be used for a lot of keyboard controllers, outboard synthesizers, really anything that connects and is controlled via the MIDI interface. Before we talk about the digital connections on the Ferrofist Pulse, let's talk about clocking. Clocking is super important in your recording workflow. Uh, it maintains the stability and keeps multiple devices synchronized automatically so that their clocks line up with one being the master clock and everything else following that. Now you'll notice on your Ferrofish Pulse you have BNC for word clock available to you. Your BNC connection is very popular for especially in post-production or whether you're clocking a lot of different sources together. Let's say, for example, you're clocking various video sources to your I.O., everything like that. BNC is the way to connect it. However, you can clock either via ADAT or via MADI or Dante because they're digital connections. So therefore, if you're just going between the Ferrofish Pulse and your recording interface, you don't need to use BNC because your recording interface may not even have that available on it. Don't worry about that. It's simply not needed. You can clock via ADAT or MADI or Dante. Any one of those is perfectly fine for clocking. If you're going to utilize all eight physical connections of ADAT on the back of the Ferrofish Pulse, most likely you enter a very largely expanded system and you already know how to make the connections. For the majority of you, since you don't have typically more than two sets of analog ADAT I.O. on the back of your recording interface, you're going to use the first four sets of ADAT I.O. available on the Ferrofish Pulse. And that is 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 if recording 44, 1 or 48. Or 1 through 4 and 5 through 8 if you happen to be recording above 96k. Therefore, you can ignore the second ADAT I.O. connection. So now let's get your recording interface connected to your Ferrofish Pulse. From the first set of ADAT I.O. available on the back of your recording interface, you're going to connect a single ADAT cable into the output of the first set, and you're going to take that and connect the other end of that cable to the input of the first set of ADAT I.O. available on the Ferrofish Pulse, labeled 1 through 8. You are then going to take a single ADAT cable and come out of the output of channels 1 through 8 in the first set of ADAT I.O. available on the Ferrofish Pulse. And you're going to connect the other end of that ADAT cable into the input of 1 through 8 on your recording interface. You're going to repeat this for 9 through 16. Basically, you've got a big loop going around that is connected via digitally. So that analog input of 1 through 8 on the Ferrofish Pulse will communicate those sources to the ADAT output of 1 through 8 to your recording interface. I'm not going to cover Dante today because if you're doing Dante, most likely this is not your first foray into it, and you already know how to do that. So if you're connecting via MADI, simply take the connector, connect it to the output of MADI on the Ferrofish Pulse, and go to the input of MADI on your MADI-capable device. Then come out of your interface via the second MADI cable and return that back to the Ferrofish Pulse, and now you've got that set. Choose MADI if you're connecting that way, or Dante, or ADAT, depending on which protocol you're using. You just tell your digital audio workstation to clock via that source. So hopefully you now know how to set up your Fairfish Pulse to your existing audio interface so you can get up and running very fast. So if you happen to be a woodworker, I also have another YouTube channel called Artisan Woodshed. I encourage you to go check that out. What is Artisan Woodshed? Well, it's a business that my wife and I started where we make 
cutting boards, charcuterie boards, river tables, and everything in between. We do a lot of work with wood, so if you're interested in doing that, come check it out. On that channel, you'll find a lot of how-to. It's at the very beginning stages, so I encourage you to go check that out. You can also go to www.artisanwoodshed.com and check out some of the things that we've made thus far. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoy your Farrowfish Pulse as much as I do. It's been a wonderful addition to my studio. The Farrowfish Pulse is an incredible bang for the buck. However, Farrowfish does make a 32 channel I.O. that has even better conversion. So if you need additional I.O. and you really want to take that conversion up a notch or two, I encourage you to check that out. Either way, I hope you enjoy your new Farrowfish Pulse. It's been a great addition to my studio as I'm confident it'll be a great addition to yours. Have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Do me a favor, don't forget to like, subscribe, you know all that stuff. But until next time, have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.